The story, the legend of Vincenzo Bellini, begins on the 3rd of November 1801 in Catania, and specifically in this place, Palazzo Gravina Cruias, built in Piazza San Francesco d'Assisi. <laughs> In Catania, Bellini learns the basics of music from an early age until he is 18 years old. In 1819, he moves to the Real Collegio di Musica of San Sebastiano in Naples to continue his musical education with a scholarship granted to him by Stefano Notar Bartolo, Duke of San Martino and Montalbo. Bellini's birthplace is nowadays a museum dedicated to him in which different kinds of items are preserved, such as musical scores, letters, portraits and heirlooms that belong to the composer and his family. Vincenzo Bellini, or as he is usually referred to as one of Catania, was born into a family of musicians. He is the first born son of Rosario Bellini and Agatha Ferlito, which will have other children after him. Most of them initiated to the study of music, even if none of them ever had the same national and international success as Vincenzo. He started his apprenticeship with the grandfather, Vincenzo Tobia Bellini, who was at that time the chapel master of Catania in service to the monastic communities, the city senate and the noble family Paterno Castello, as well as with his father Rosario. Because of this, the young Vincenzo had quite a familiarity with the noble environments in Catania, in which both his grandfather and his father worked. It's in these environments that Vincenzo begins to perform his music. Before we continue, it might be relevant to wonder where music was performed in the Catania of the early 19th century. Churches, noble palaces like Palazzo Biscari, open-air stages and theatres were venues in which there were practised all kinds of music genres, such as sacred music, oratory, encomiastic cantata and the opera. These were not only the years in which a variety of music genres began to develop, but also in which the traditional image of the musician as a profession changed. Musicians were not at the service of courts and religious institutions anymore. They were paid for their work carried out in theatres, churches, in academies, as well as their contributions as public or private teachers. Some tales from that time suggest that the young Vincenzo, then an apprentice musician, used to practice at the monumental pipe organ built by Donato del Piano between 1755 and 1767. Today, the instrument is still in the church of San Nicolò l'Arena, near the Benedictine Monastery of Catania, where the Department of Humanities of the University of Catania is currently hosted. In his Catanese period, Bellini writes ten musical compositions of sacred and profane music. All of them have been studied and analyzed by Professor Maria Rosa De Luca in her monograph entitled Gli Spazi del Talento, Primizi Musicali del Giovane Bellini, published last year. Among these works, between 1817 and 1818, Bellini composes three devotional pieces, which are Three Tanto Mergo, three liturgical pieces, which are the Messa in G major and Messa in D major and the Gracias Agimus, one encomiastic cantata, one cavatina entitled Si per te granum eterno and one aria for soprano and orchestra entitled E nello stringerti a questo core. 
It's indeed in this place, the Duomo of Catania, that the mortal remains of Vincenzo Bellini are kept since 1876, the year in which his remains came back home from the Parisian cemetery of Père Lachaise, where he was buried after his sudden death in 1835.
Bellini's music is a cultural heritage upon which Catania's collective identity has been built over time. It is not surprising, therefore, that the bigger public garden of the city, designed in 1883, has been named after this distinguished citizen. after Villa Bellini has been built, and precisely on May 31st, 1890, the main theatre of the city was built and named after the composer as well. Based on a project of the architect Carlo Sada, the theatre opened with a normal stage performance. Today, the Teatro Massimo Bellini still represents the vital centre of Catania's musical life. On its stage performed lots of famous opera singers, such as Toti Dal Monte, Renata Scotto, Monsignor Caballé, Mirella Freni and Luciano Pavarotti. Many conductors as Gino Marinuzzi, Vittorio Gui, Georg Stolti and Riccardo Muti. And some of the best stage directors such as Mario Lanfranchi, Carlo Maestrini, Franco Enriquez, Mauro Bolognini and Pierluigi Pizzi, whose stagings have been shown in other national and international theatres. Among the best singers of the Bellini's repertoire, there is unquestionably the Greek soprano Maria Callas. Actually, she had her debut in Teatro Massimo Bellini during the 1950 and 1951 opera seasons. She sang Norma, I Puritani and Il Pirata. And these operas will be forever connected to her career. <laughs> The monument to Bellini was built in 1882 in one of the main squares of Catania, Piazza Sesicoro, by Giulio Monteverde. With its imposing size and its central position, it symbolizes the importance of the musician for the citizens of Catania. Now that we are at the end of this journey, we hope that it is evident why Vincenzo Bellini is one of the most appreciated opera composers, not only in his hometown, but also in Italy and in the rest of the world, since his immortal operas are still performed and staged after all this time.